Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, our lesson is on amorphous solids. There is a multi-step graphic organizer to tell you all the steps and the amount of the various uh, ingredients for a formula that you will uh, use. So, if you forget something or get confused, please refer to the graphic organizer. So, let's go ahead and get started. This is a danger lab, so please wear your safety glasses. And let's start off with step one. Step one says add two microspatula scoops of borax. Borax is the substance in the jar labeled uh, borax. To 30 milliliters of water in the beaker. So here we have the beaker. So obviously you must first measure out 30 milliliters of water. And we all remember how to do that, I hope. And that's not too difficult as we are now experts with that. And there we go, 30 milliliters of water in the beaker. And we take two micro spatulas full so that we'd use the spoon-like or scoop-like end. Just make it sort of like a, a slightly rounded spoonful. There's one. There's two. Don't make a big heaping spoonful like that or you will get a little too much uh, viscosity in your amorphous solid. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is using the tongs. You will hold the beaker and what you need to do is dissolve the borax into the water. So we simply light our alcohol burner We simply light our alcohol burner, there it is, and now we hold the beaker up near the rim, we place it over there, and we swirl it periodically with our micro spatula, breaking up the chunks of the borax solution, and we swirl it until it is all dissolved. Okay, so our borax solution is now dissolved, so now we have to put it in something called a water bath, which is nothing more than a glass petri dish filled with water. We place that in there, and what that does is that rapidly cools the substance off. We don't want this to be hot when we go to use it, so that would be the next step. Then we put the flame out. Now one individual in your lab group can be carrying out that procedure, and the, the, another individual in the group can then be carrying out this next procedure. Now the next procedure we have to take a cup. This is the tall cup. Don't use the short cup that we use for getting our water out. And we have to mark on this a line of 60 milliliters. So, all you do then is very simply measure out 60 milliliters in your graduated cylinder. Pour it into the cup. Take your Sharpie and mark a line on the cup. Well, actually leave it sit on the table so it's level. Mark a line on the cup where 60 milliliters comes to. Okay, then we pour the water out. Now we know that that's about 60 milliliters of a liquid, okay? Now the next step is we now take the white glue. This is Elmer's white school glue. And we pour this into there. Please do not pour the glue into the graduated cylinder, it will ruin it. So we pour it into there until we have 60 milliliters, which would be right up to the line we previously marked. Okay. Then we cap that back up so it doesn't dry out. So now we have 60 milliliters of white glue. Now I'm going to measure out 30 milliliters of water. And again, someone should be doing this step while the other people are taking and measuring out the borax and heating that solution up. All right, so there we have 30 milliliters of water. We pour that into the white glue to dilute it. And then we take our micro spatula and we stir it so that it is evenly mixed. We want the glue to be kind of soupy. 
All right, now comes the arts and crafts part. I want you to add some food coloring to this to give it some color because it'll well, look a little nicer. So we take our food coloring. We can read the different recipes on the back. Please use no more than like three, two to three, maybe four drops, but don't definitely use any more than four drops because that will interfere with our uh, chemical reaction. So I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna make green. So one, two, three, four at the most. If you put more than that in, chances are your experiment will not be successful and we'll know why. All right, once you put the food coloring in, then stir it to evenly blend the color. And there we have our lovely green watery glue now. 60 milliliters of glue, 30 milliliters of water, and four drops of food coloring. All right, next step. Now this is the uh, critical step where we're having the chemical reaction occur. Now we take our borax solution, which should be nice and cool now, so you should be able to pick it up and handle it without using the tongs. We now pour that into our mixture, and now we must stir to cause the cross-linkers to react with the polymers of the glue, and what happens now is you get, well, uh, an amorphous solid. Okay, so keep stirring until almost all of the liquid has been absorbed into the amorphous solid. Mixing, 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 so we'll mix that for a while. All right, so we've mixed things a while, and now we have a blob of amorphous solid. Okay, since this is made out of glue and borax, it should be fairly non-toxic. I would not recommend eating it, though. We now need to get that into a zip lock bag so it can rest overnight during the so-called resting stage. The borax cross-linkers will link to the polymers of the glue and create, hopefully, a very nice amorphous solid. So let's get as much of that out of there as we can and put it into the bag, sliding it off of the micro spatula. We then put it in the Ziploc bag, try to flatten it out pretty good. We want this to be able to be sealed up, get most of the air out of it, and then simply zip your Ziploc bag so that the amorphous solid is now sealed off from the outside air. You then take this and very simply put it in your drawer. So lab group in period three, put it in drawer three, tell it to rest nicely, and hopefully it will uh, wake up tomorrow when you come and be very, very nice. Now for cleanup. The cup is a disaster, so we need to take this cup and just discard that. We'll never get that clean. The micro spatula, we need to take a moist paper towel. And we need to get all of the morphous solid glue mixture off of it. Okay, so that's nice. We then need to rinse out our beaker to get the residue of the borax solution out of that. Just rinse it out. And then put everything back nice and neat as uh, the picture shows you. And then have a seat. All right. Good luck.